Hello and welcome to this video covering the distribution and branches of the internal carotid artery. We're going to take a look at the course this vessel takes as it passes through the skull, gives off some branches and terminates as the anterior and middle cerebral arteries, which are of course the anterior cerebral circulation. Now the internal carotid artery begins life outside the cranium and is a branch of the common carotid artery. The common carotid artery divides into two at the upper border of the thyroid cartilage. One of those branches will be our internal carotid artery, the other will be the external carotid artery. Let's stick with our internal carotid artery. It enters the skull via an opening and that opening is called the carotid canal. It initially ascends into that opening and then travels horizontally and this is where the canal represents a short tunnel. It then changes direction at the level of the superior opening of a foramen called foramen lacerum. Foramen lacerum is a strange foramen in the sense that its inferior opening actually has a cartilage plug sitting in there. So nothing really passes through that foramen but simply the internal carotid artery changes direction to ascend at the level of the base of the skull. The Carotid canal is contained within the petrous part of the temporal bone and some small branches from there will travel to the inner ear. At this point though the internal carotid artery will ascend and this is when it takes on a very characteristic shape called the carotid siphon. Now most of the carotid siphon is contained within one of the dual venous sinuses and this is called the cavernous sinus. The cavernous segment of the vessel is not bathed in blood, but it is surrounded by dural venous sinus endothelium. And other structures are within the cavernous sinus as well, including cranial nerves. So the carotid siphon is probably most frequently referred to on imaging. And the imaging would be an angiogram. So we can see an angiogram coming on screen now. And we can also draw on those cranial nerves that pass through the cavernous sinus. So this is a clinically important area. If we had an aneurysm of the internal carotid artery here, it could put pressure on those cranial nerves. The internal carotid artery will continue to ascend. It will leave to enter the dura at the anterior clinoid process of the sphenoid bone. And there it will travel and give, continue to contribute to its terminal branches, which are the anterior cerebral artery and the middle cerebral artery. Now would be a good time to think about some of the major branches that come off of the vessel as it courses through the skull. The first one would be the hypophyseal vessels. The hypophyseal vessels supply the pituitary gland and come from the cavernous segment. The ophthalmic vessels would come from the region around the anterior clinoid process. They would leave beneath the optic nerve and give rise to central arteries of the retina. The anterior choroidal vessel would supply the hippocampus, the amygdala, nuclei of the thalamus and the very distal portion of the posterior limb of the internal capsule and is one of the most distal branches. Then we have the posterior communicating branch which leaves just before the terminal branching into the middle and anterior cerebral arteries and joins up with the posterior cerebral artery. This would then connect the anterior and posterior circulations. Subscribe to Soton Brain Hub for more videos to help explain the mysteries of the brain.